Hi creative friends, Sonia here from Sustain My Craft Habit. I love a good upcycling project, so today I'm excited to show you how I turned an old butcher block table into a useful tufted bench for my home. Welcome back to our channel. I'm really proud of this DIY. I challenged myself to use materials I had at home. Everything from the base to the buttons were repurposed. And I'd been wanting to make a bench for a while, but when I looked into buying legs and hardware, I found they cost way more than I wanted to spend. That's when my hubby came to my rescue. He remembered this old butcher block table we were no longer using. We'd actually bought it more than 15 years ago from Ikea for our very first tiny little apartment. And since the legs and frame were still in great condition, we decided to reuse them for the bench frame along with the hardware. We started by disassembling the butcher block and separating the pieces into a keep and a toss pile. The top of the butcher block table was pretty damaged, so that piece we put into a toss pile, as well as the wheels on the bottom of the table were damaged as well. With all the pieces apart, we sanded down all of the edges and then measured and marked the legs to size and cut them. The full tutorial with the dimensions and the supply list are on the blog, sustainmycrafthabit.com. We filled the holes, the pre-existing holes, with some wood filler and then sanded, sanded those down when they were dry. We needed a couple of newer pieces of wood for the length of the bench, so these were measured and marked and then pre-drilled and notched to fit the same hardware that we used or that were used on the butcher block table. With all the pieces prepped, we began to assemble the bench frame. You can see here that the new longer board is pre-drilled and notched so that the hardware fits into the corners, the same as the existing pieces of wood. Okay, so now that I have the bench frame built, I'm going to give it a coat of paint and I chose this satin enamel um, furniture paint and it's like a, a beigey taupey color and it matches pretty nicely with my gray fabric. So I'm going to start by grabbing my brush and I have my paint here and I will just apply the paint first with my brush to any of the corners. well what I'm doing so I'm gonna come around but uh, that's where I'm gonna start is to get in um, all of the corners that I'm not gonna be able to get to with a roller which I also have here so once I have all my corners done I'm going to grab my roller and give the whole thing uh, a coat of paint Okay, so now what I'm going to do is make my fabric covered buttons for my tufted bench. So what you normally see with a tufted bench is some fabric covered buttons. And although you can buy an actual um, kit to make these buttons um, using the same material that you have for your bench or your headboard or whatever the case may be, I thought I would uh, make this a true repurpose and upcycling projects and, and um, see what I have at home and reuse it and reuse what I have instead of going and buying a kit that I'm likely only going to um, use this one time. So what I have are these other buttons that are a pretty good size and they came from an old cardigan that my mom had. So she gave me these buttons and the idea was to first try and um, replace the, the fabric 
by removing and pulling them apart and then taking it off. And I did that here. So I took it off, we took it off, we pulled it apart. And when I try to put my fabric, the new fabric on, I ended up damaging the, the, the piece because I was using pliers and I don't have the tool you need that you would get in that kit that you would buy. So that's not gonna work. So instead what I'm going to do is try a different method. And um, instead of pulling the fabric off and replacing it, I am going to leave the old fabric on and simply cover it. So what I have here is already a circle cut. And you may need to play around with your pieces if you're gonna be doing the same method to see what's going to fit. So this circle size is going to be enough that basically just want it to be able to wrap around the button, but leave the center shank um, opening because that's what you're gonna to use to secure the button onto the bench. So I have my circle, I'm gonna cut another one in the same size. In total I need, I have like six buttons here, but I actually only need four for my bench. So there, put one aside for after. And the first step is to go to my sewing machine and do a single stitch, edge stitch around the circle. And I'm going to use a really, really um, strong thread um, because what's gonna happen is I'm gonna be pulling on that thread and I don't want it to break. So that's my first step. Okay, so this is what I meant with a single stitch around the circle. I did it pretty close to the edge, like maybe an eighth of an inch away. And I use this um, thread. What I would suggest using is a monofilament thread, or those that clear, um, almost plastic. I guess it is plastic. That clear plastic thread that you can use. You, it's like also called fishing line, um, but you can sew with it. So I have something similar. It's a very very durable thread. And what I'm going to do is now that I have these um, this stitched around, and I used really long basting stitches because I want to be able to pull on the thread and basically gather the gather the fabric around making a bit of a cap around my button so you can pull on the thread work one side at a time so see how it's gathering once you've pulled it you can insert the other, you can insert the button inside and then continue to pull on the thread so that it covers it and then pulls in neatly behind. Okay, so oops, there's a lot of thread here. You can trim it afterwards, but this is. So it's looking pretty um, clean on the front side, and then that's the reverse side. And um, I can pull, I'm gonna just keep pulling it as tight as I can get it. Um, you can even tie the thread ends together to keep them from opening up. Seems I had this problem with my sewing here, but it's not too bad. You don't really notice it on the front side, so I'm not gonna worry about it. But I am gonna tie these threads together so that it, that it keeps from opening. really tight again once I've knotted the threads I'm going to um, I'm going to cut them as an extra step what I, I have here is my hot glue gun and although it doesn't look it looks pretty secure to me actually um, I don't even know that I need it, but what you can do if you're finding it's a little bit loose in some spots, you can force the tip of the glue gun underneath the fabric and um, squeeze a bit of glue and then and then press on the cover, the button to hold the glue in place. And that, that, that'll help hold the fabric also. I think mine is pretty secure, so I'm just going to, and I know I, this thread is really strong, it's not gonna break on its own. It's actually almost hard to cut with my fabric scissors, surprisingly. So 
so there's the the button and I still have which is really important is the shank um, the hole for the shank button is still exposed on the back and that's what I'm going to use to thread um, onto my tufted bench so that on the front side it looks really clean and uh, aside from this one spot where I think it was just more something happened with my I, I think a, a, a stitch skipped when I was sewing but aside from that I'm actually really happy with it and I didn't have to buy the the toolkit either. I'm gonna go ahead and make the rest of the buttons that I need for my bench. Okay, so I have the piece of plywood cut to the length and width of the bench, which is uh, 17 inches wide and 48 inches long. And what I'm going to do now is mark the placement for the buttons that I'm going to be um, adding to the bench, those tufted buttons. So um, what I want to do is add four of them. So because this is 48 inches long, I'm going to divide that by five. So the buttons are going to be spaced uh, about nine and a half inches apart. So I'm going to just mark that with a pencil and, um, and then after that, move on to the next step. So first I'm going to mark the center of the, the plywood. 17 inches is the width, so it's eight and a half. And I'm gonna go to about nine and a half. And then space that, so another nine and a half inches apart. So now it's time to upholster the, the bench. I have the fabric here that I'm going to be using. It's a really um, beautiful soft canvas material, 100% cotton bull denim. So on the right side, which I have facing down, it's, um, it looks like, a, looks like a nice twill like your jeans would have, uh, a texture, but it's also very soft and it looks like it's been brushed. So that's the right side. I'm gonna have it facing down. It's in a charcoal, dark gray color. So I have the full length here. Next I'm going to place my batting over top. I'm just gonna center it. So I have it folded in half. I think I have more length than I actually need. So I'll just have it hanging down on the one side. And then this side here is over 17 inches, I believe, let me check. Yes, so that's fine. So that's gonna wrap around the plywood. And then I'm going to take, I have a piece of dense foam here, and this is two and a half inches thick, so that's gonna go on top as well, and I'll just center it also. And then after that, I'm going to put the piece of plywood that has been drilled with the two holes on top of the foam. And now it's ready to start to upholster the, the piece. So I'm going to, I'm going to get a, another set of hands and using a staple gun, going to staple the fabric, pulling um, the foam and the batting tightly to the board. Okay, so we're starting in the, the center we already did. So let's, okay, I'll hold it. Just don't be that close.
Okay, so now it's time to attach the buttons and I have flipped my seat over and the holes that I originally made, I ended up being too small. So I'm grabbing a larger drill bit and I'm just gonna make these holes bigger so that it's gonna be easier to thread the needle through. Okay, so now basically I have two holes side by side and I'm ready now to take my long needle that I have. This is about the only thing that I bought to make this project. And it's, um, cause the needles I had were just not long enough. It's not quite as long as an upholstery needle would be, which I think is 12 inches. This is about seven inches long, but it's plenty uh, long enough because I basically all I need is it to be able to fit through this backside and go through the foam um, onto the front. So that's what I'm gonna do now is go through one of these holes that I just enlarged and go straight down through, I'm gonna push it down through the foam. And when I feel like it's gone through, I'm going to flip the seat over. See it through. I'm gonna pull the needle all the way through, make sure that I have long enough thread. And this thread that I'm using is a really, really strong um, thread. And it's actually not even sewing thread. My husband found it from in his uh, fishing supplies, but basically you can use like a monofilament thread, something that's not gonna break because I'm gonna be pulling on it quite a bit. So it has to be able to withstand any kind of um, um, pulling. Okay, so now I'm on the right side. I'm gonna take my fa my fabric covered button and I'm going to thread my needle through the eyelet on the back like that. And now I want to make sure that when I go back down through to the back side I poke the hole or poke the needle through the other hole. So the way that I'm gonna do that is by taking another long needle to help me guide it. So I'm gonna take this needle and poke it through that second hole. That's too far from the original button. So this part takes a little bit of time to make sure you get the right placement. Okay, so that's pretty good. So now I have a, a guide for this needle. Uh, I'm going to run it back down through to the back side. Okay, there, got it. So that takes a little bit of playing around. Uh, so I use this shorter needle as my guide to try and run this needle straight down beside it because when I flip it over, you'll see that they are now side by side. So I'm gonna remove the shorter needle because I don't need it anymore. Put that aside and now I'm gonna pull this long needle all the way through. This is the needle that has the thread with the button attached to it on the other side. And then I'm gonna cut this. And very, very, um, so with both my hands, I'm gonna pull on the thread as hard as I can and knot them together. If you have someone else helping you or pushing on the button on the front side, that would actually probably be best, but I'm gonna just do this on my own and um, get my thread lined up. I don't get all tangled like I am here. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull on the thread and then knot it. and then I can cut the ends. So now when I flip it over, I have my buttons. After covering the seat, we attached it to the base using some L-shaped brackets. And with that, the bench is complete. 
So I'm pretty proud of how this turned out using materials I mostly found at home. I was able to put this piece together. Have you ever thought about making an indoor bench? I hope this video has inspired you to look around your house and see what you can reuse and repurpose to make something new for your home. For more DIY projects, visit Sustain My Craft Habit. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.